Compiling and executing code is one of the most important things that's done by a software development team. And Team Foundation Server supports a build engine called Team Build. And Team Build is used to basically do compilation, sometimes run, running tests, occasionally deployment of code, all of those things involved in making sure that your application can compile successfully. So let's take a look at how we install that capability. And to do so, we use something called a build controller and a build agent. So let's open up our Team Foundation Server Administration Console. And if we wanted to install a build controller, we do so from this page. Now, Notice this is on my application tier. Um, I don't mind putting a controller on an application tier, but a best practice is not to install a bunch of agents on your Team Foundation Server application tier. And the reason behind that is agents tend to be very greedy when they're doing compilation with both processing power and sometimes disk I.O. So what you want to do is push those off onto other servers. And you can move the build controller off to those servers as well. If you didn't have the Team Foundation Server Administration Console and you just want to put a build controller somewhere, you simply install TFS on that machine and specify that you want to set up a build configuration. Basically, it gets you to the exact spot we are here, except that instead of clicking configure installed features, it automatically does that for you. It gets you to here. So if you already have TFS installed and you haven't done any configuration, select the build configuration and click configure installed features. If, however, you don't have the administration console, simply install TFS and it'll say what component do you want to install. You simply select the build component and it'll get you to this screen, the Team Foundation Server Configuration Center. So we're configuring the Team Foundation build service. Let's go ahead and start the wizard. By the way, you'll notice that we have an, an uh, application tier and SharePoint products on this server. We're going to configure the build service, however, on this server. Click start the wizard. And we're going to walk through a very simple wizard. Do we want to participate? Sure. We'll, we'll help Microsoft make better products. The next thing we need to do is specify which team project collection this build controller is tied to. Now, this is a restriction. Build controllers can only be tied to one TPC. So because of that, you'll need to specify very carefully which TPC you want to be tied to. Now, if you have multiple team project collections, you'll need to have multiple build controllers, generally running on separate machines. So let's take a look. We're going to tie to our default collection. Uh, we could hit browse and we could also, we have our offsite collection that we could tie it to our offsite collection. Now I'm going to tie it to our default collection because we've got so, that's where our, most of our work is. This offsite stuff, we don't have much there. So let's connect to our default collection. Notice that it found zero build controllers and zero build agents running on zero machines. Well, that's obvious. We haven't set anything up yet. However, what's interesting here is if you have other build controllers and other build agents on other machines, it'll automatically pick that up and say, hey, by the way, you've already got, say, two other build controllers tied to this default collection with 10 other build agents and running on a total of eight machines or something like that. So you can kind of get an idea of how big your network is for this. We're going to tie it to our default collection, simply hit next, and then we're going to go into build services. This is basically, do we want any of the build agents installed on here? Um, we're going to use the default setting here, the number of build agents. This is going to be the build controller and build agents. We can say we want no build agents on this machine if we like. Basically, this is the application tier. I might not want to run any in production. Since this is a course, I'm going to say one, the recommended amount. Um, the number one comes from the number of processors on this box. Uh, we've got one proc on the box, therefore it's recommending that I do one. So we're going to stick with one. You can also configure it later, but you have to configure it before you can start running builds.
So I am going to put the controller on this machine as well as one agent. Again, we could put as many agents as we want on. Um, I would probably not tend to go too far beyond the recommendations, however, unless you have a very good reason. We'll stick with one. Click Next. What do we want to run the Team Foundation build service as? Do we want to use a specific user account or do we want to run it as network service? There's a couple of reasons you may want to run it as network service, I mean as a, a user account. That's because you might want to grant permissions to drop folders and stuff more easily than you can with network service. You, you, know, you have to remember to put the machine name and then the dollar sign at the end with network service. All depends on, on how you want to set it up. I'm going to go ahead and use the network service. Don't have a problem with that. Let's hit next. We can review all of the various things. Here's going to be the new controller name. We can scroll down. It's going to run as a network service. It's going to tie to this default collection. And it's going to run over port 9191. Now we can change that later if we like. Click next. It's going to run through some readiness checks. Everything's passed. We're happy. We can then click configure. Once it's run, we have now been able to install our build agent. Let's click Next. You can see the success, and we can close. We now have installed a build agent and set it up on our Team Foundation server application tier. The agent, one agent, and the controller.